Welcome back to the Higher Roll Hot Corner, where sports and recruitment meet. I am your host, Dan Spatel, joined as always by my co-host, Louis Marisi. Louis, great to see you again. Let's jump right in. What's going on in your world and the world of sports today? Uh, lots going on in, in my world. Not from the sports standpoint. Either my teams are no longer playing or they just stink and there's no point in watching them. But personally, coming to you live from my new office and my new home. So lots of lots going on. I like that we're matching our backgrounds now with the walls. Great that was on purpose. That was on purpose. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, what's going on in the world of sports today, Louis? Uh, well, NFL, you know, got two teams going to the Super Bowl. I believe we got the Chiefs and the Eagles. So congrats to them going to duke it out in Arizona uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, and on top of that, you know, on the theme of football, well, we have the Pro Bowl, which well, I have my opinions on. We we, we kind of have the Pro Bowl. I would love to hear your opinions on the Pro Bowl, Louie. It's an empty award. I mean, it's one of those things like, you know, people get drafted or, or, or voted in or whatever the case is. Half of them don't go. Half of them are in the, the Super Bowl. Then they bring in Guys, you know, like Huntley, like what he's a second string quarterback that's not very good that gets voted in, you know, good for him. Like, but it's it's just like it's a waste of time. Like, it's not even entertaining from a fan standpoint. Well, that and they changed the game now. They're doing like a, more of the skills competition. They made it a flag football game, which to be fair, nobody was really tackling anyway, because why would you risk injury if you're playing in a game that has no meaning? Tyler Huntley is a starting quarterback. Derek Carr is one of the other quarterbacks. He got benched at the end of the season. That's not his own fault. I think he still had a fine season. The Raiders just make questionable decisions. Uh, but all around, it's just a weird feeling of the, the Pro Bowl this year. The highlight is that the Manning brothers are coaching it, and that's that's the highlight of it. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tune in. I think they're funny. You know, they do their simulcast with the actual game on is it Monday nights, I think it is. It's just like, it's entertaining. They're funny. They have good banter. I mean, I get – you know, they're going to do everything they can to get fans involved. But, like, it's, you know, I will say this. When I was younger, obviously, it was really cool just across the, the board with All-Star games. Like, I used to love the home run derby. Mm -hmm. um, NHL All-Star game, you know, you get to see Wayne Gretzky play with Mario Lemieux. You know, they've done away. Now it's three on three. It's just like, you know, they try and, and, and change things too much. And now it just kind of sucks altogether. I have clearly very strong opinions on it. It's... They've they've changed them all. Um, maybe the dunk competition is the one good one that's left out there, but yes. Uh, well, and then you got to look at it from these players who are negotiating contracts, free agency, whatever that may be. I don't know if it's still a thing, but at one point, getting Pro Bowl nominations was an incentive built into contracts. Um, just like playing a percentage of snaps, teams making the playoffs, getting a certain number of stats. How do you deal with an incentive package? If you're Tyler Huntley and you have that incentive in your contract, great, good for you, man. You started five games and you just got an incentive for basically doing nothing. But I got to assume they start removing those if they haven't already from contract negotiations. Heck yeah. I mean, like, again, yeah, good for the players that shouldn't be there who are not all-star caliber by, you know, what we would consider definition. But, you know, good to them for getting the extra bump and pay for the bonus. But it seems like, you know, 60% of the league either gets voted in or is a replacement player. I just think if you're a, a general manager creating contracts for, for players that unless you're, you know, Lamar Jackson or if you're, you know, one of the guys that is considered an all-star in this league, you might have those. But aside from that, like, it, it's just something that I think is going to be left out. It's a fun trip to Arizona for some people this year, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, they, they have plenty of other kickers, like not – kickers as in a kicking in football but like other bonuses that they have available to them as far as actual performance on the field so let that speak to the extra money they make sure well, let's flip the script let's talk about incentive trips company incentives uh from football players you get it from those various bonuses making the pro bowl maybe is one of them at this point but company incentives for performance uh incentive trips are a big thing in a lot of industries Yes, yes. Uh, some places call them just incentive trips. Others call them like President's Club or, you know, they have all these creative names and whatnot. But I, I think they're great. And they actually, for the most part, and, and the experiences I've had, they do mean something. You've hit goals that, you know, are not easily attainable, but they are put in place based on metrics and grow that goal based on, you know, history of, of how many people hit it. You know, they want it to be special. And once you're on those trips, 
you know, usually it's somewhere, I can say exotic, like for higher well, we're going to Scottsdale. Scottsdale's awesome, but you know, nice hotel, dinner, some um, some stipend on a daily basis. Like it's it's a great setup and it's it's a good reward for a job well done. I mean, and it, yeah. it pushes people. Like if some people have goals or goals are great. And I put it on my goal sheet and sent it. You know, there's things that go into that, but if you're not seeing something or if you're not motivated by anything. Let, let an incentive trip motivate you. There should be others, but it's at least something to push every day for. Yep. Before we dive into, you know, the, the motivation behind the whatnot, let's dial back into the higher one, because I know that you're going on the incentive trip this next year. Uh, so congratulations to you for making that for the first time uh, in your second year with higher well. Uh, hopefully I can you know, run it back with you next year and we'll, we'll hang out together. But uh, let's talk a little more about what it took for you to achieve that and what you get for doing it. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. So what it takes, I mean, there, there is those laws. I mean, it's a tough business for it. Recruiting is, is it's challenging. Um, we, we are in the business of people, probably the most unpredictable quote unquote product that can be sold or pitched or relied upon. Even it's, it's tough. Um, so it, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance. Work you put in on Monday doesn't always show on Friday, but in a month and a Friday from then, it, it very well could. It's being patient, and that's something, personally, I've struggled with in personal life, uh, my business career. Those are some of the attributes, and you know, the reward uh, is, again, a trip to, to Arizona, Scottsdale. I'm going to play golf. I'm going to hang out with coworkers, probably, maybe, definitely going to have a few drinks. Like It's, it's going to be a good time. Probably, maybe, definitely. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. But, you know, we talk about, uh, in a lot of previous episodes, we talked about competition. We've talked about companies and employees preparing for hitting goals, making goals. Uh, we just talked about, you know, the athlete mentality and, and those types of uh, motivation, drive, persistence, things that you just talked about. This is kind of that culminating factor potentially at the end of all of those components put together in a successful year leads you to this trip uh, or this incentive or whatever companies do. Uh, maybe it's from a bonus standpoint or something along those lines. Um, and like you said, I mean, it's it's something to look forward to. It's something to put on your goal sheet moving forward that this is my plan. This is what I'm going to hit for that year. Um, let's throw it on to not just you as an individual going on this incentive trip, but Let's talk about what it can do for a company as a whole to offer these types of things. You know, what, what do they gain from offering uh, an incentive trip like this or uh, some big reward on a yearly basis to their top earning and top performing employees? Well, it's it's great to, to build your brand recognition. Um, and I, again, you stemmed on it like competition. I mean, candidates are considering many roles all at once, like when they're interviewing for the most part. And this could be something that sticks out and, and not only the incentive trip as a whole, you get content, you get people just, you know, enjoying the, the business and telling other folks about it. If you're like a referral, like I go on this trip, I'm going to tell someone that wants to work for higher. Well, we had an incentive trip. It was awesome. Like, you know, it builds the brand and, and it shows like it, it's a place that cares about its employees. The folks that are reaching these goals that are set, they're, they're rewarding those folks. And, and most people want to feel that if they're going above and beyond and doing what is necessary and then some, you know, if it doesn't go unnoticed and let's face it, recognition, some people thrive on it. Others, you know, it, it fits money, whatever, but you know, it's nice to be recognized amongst your peers that, you know, you hit a certain goal and you're getting rewarded when maybe there's people that didn't and aren't getting rewarded. You know, back to your question. I think it helps build brand um, and just overall employee happiness and helps you stick out from a competitive standpoint compared to other companies. Yeah. And I think, you know, the actual, piece of the trip from a culture standpoint is probably a great boost to uh, that employee group who does attain that. You know, we talk about company culture. We talk about ways that you can improve your culture, ways that you can engage your employees. I don't think anything's better than being able to engage both from a professional standpoint, but a personal standpoint um, in a shared success, something like this. Um, you know, we got together a couple times last year, hire well in Chicago always a great time, a lot of business to be done, a lot we achieve. Um, we also celebrate the successes and we, we take the time to, um, you know, get to know each other on more of a personal level, build that relationship and just kind of get together and really break down, have fun. And it really does 
fuel us moving forward um, for the rest of the year, the rest of the quarter, whatever that may look like. So this is something that maybe it establishes that long-term goal. Maybe it keeps people focused. Um, maybe they want to do it because of the personal aspect that comes with it, not just the trip itself. So a lot of different motivations, uh, a lot of different motives for people who are trying to achieve that. And it's not just tied to, you know, incentive based. It's not just tied to revenue producing roles, not just tied to hitting key numbers. Sometimes it really just depends on the company. Uh, obviously with your focus more on the sales side, it's about hitting numbers typically uh, for us. It can be about hitting numbers, uh, but in my role specifically, it's not just a number to hit, uh, which has been nice, uh, you know, working on the on-demand side, we're on contracts with clients um, and we're working mainly with one client at a time. While I really like the work that I do, uh, it doesn't necessarily translate to these larger months with bigger numbers you're hitting on a month to month basis, but it's consistent. Uh, and so Hirewell has actually built out a process where I can achieve this incentive just like you can, but through a different avenue because we do different work in some capacity. Yeah, and, and I can kind of relate to that. And, you know, my previous company, 95% of the employees were salespeople. So the president's club was all designed for salespeople hitting metrics every month consistently, all that. I was in recruiting there, so I didn't have the same metrics. I wasn't held to the same standards, but they didn't give me a chance to do that. To flip it to now with you, Hirewell understands, okay, well, we want everyone to have incentive, whether it's an A, B, or C role. In your case, you know, they're like, well, how does this success look? What should Dan have to do to, to get on an incentive trip? And, and it incentivizes you. I mean, that's exactly what it's for. That's why it's called that. So like, it's also from a fairness standpoint and, and not just saying, hey, this is the plan. It, it's actually caring about designing it for everyone to be, you know, inspired to, to hit these goals. It, it, it does show, you know, you, you have to do this. Uh, majority of our company that are dedicated to like specific, like our FNA team, marketing, tech, me and sales, you know, it was 250K in gross profit. Um, that's how we would attain the goal um, or above. Um, I think that was established 10 years ago. And they actually this year they've, you know, bumped it to 275, 275K is what's needed at the minimum to, to be on the trip. And, and still, I mean, if you look at our company, I think quite a few hit that, but you know, they want to make sure it feels special. If half the company gets to go on it, you know, it's a nice thing to have, but it, again, it's not incentivizing your overachievers or, you know, those people that aren't just satisfied. So I think Hirewell has done a phenomenal job. Granted, I've been here for just shy of two years, one complete calendar year. And I think it's not just something that they look at as a cost. They actually care about what this trip does and they want people to make it. It's a win-win for everyone. But I think it's great how they've adapted it so the on-demand team can, can achieve goals that you know they can control in some sense. I'm absolutely very, very happy about it. And of course, yeah. you know, we like to talk about the pros of Hirewell a lot. And, and we don't typically talk about cons. There aren't really, and at least in our opinions. Um, but it's always nice to highlight the ways that we continue to, to change and innovate and, and adapt to uh, the needs of the employees and the teams. But you you mentioned cost. That's a big one. Let's talk about potentially smaller companies, less employees. Maybe you can't afford to take your employees on some lavish incentive trip. What can you do to incentivize your employees if you can't get to maybe that level? It doesn't always have to be a trip of some sort. It could be monetary bonus. I mean, anything that isn't insulting, like a $50 gift card to Chili's after you closed 250K to goal or something or 250% to goal. Yeah, that's probably more insulting than it is rewarding. It's really just showing that you, know, you value them. So whatever it is that you can do to, to establish that, it goes so far. It makes that person incentivized to do it again the next year and the next year. You know, smaller companies, yeah, they're not going to have hundred thousand to shell out for 35 people plus and you know to go on these trips so what can be done i think it has to be within your means but there are definitely ways to motivate and inspire folks to go above and beyond what you're asking i'm not saying a pizza party for like your employees is not motivation but it shouldn't be the end incentive it should be the <laughs> yeah. early motivation to push them towards that end goal 
nobody nobody's going to turn down a gift card but that's not the full thing you know that shouldn't be <laughs> oh wow you achieved two hundred thousand dollars in sales this year have a gift card have a pizza yeah party. but don't get it wrong a- chili's gift cards are great but if it's because you know i had the most sales in one week that seems in correlation with a 50 dollars chili's gift card but if it's the entire year that you've worked and you get that, it's more of a slap in the face, in my opinion. Agreed. I'm not the teller of all. Sure. Um, and there are other ways to handle recognition for employees that don't have to be solely monetary. I mean, recognition on a company basis, on a team basis, in any form is generally appreciated. You know, that shouldn't be your be all end all, but that doesn't mean you can't show somebody recognition or appreciation for having a good week or a good month as a pit stop on the way to you know, the end goal of, of incentivizing your employees to handle success. thousand percent. I mean, promotion, recognizing them that way, you know, giving them more responsibility and uh, the title change. Some people are, are very driven by that, like going from a director to uh, or a, a C-suite, you know, chief revenue officer, chief financial officer, whatever it is you know, taking that step up, it it means a lot. And it does in the industries that people work in. So that's one way that, you know, maybe not from monetary, usually those come with a pay bump, but, you know, the the whole responsibility aspect and maybe having some direct reports where you didn't have any before, you know, that shows that they trust you. You know, a lot of that establishes loyalty to you because they're putting responsibilities on you that are huge impacts on the company long-term and short-term. So just to, to give an idea of something maybe outside of just strict, hey, here's a bonus. Absolutely. There's so many different ways that you can become creative with this stuff. And there's so many avenues. I think it really boils down to employee appreciation, recognition, showing that you care, showing that it's not just a numbers thing where, all right, good job, keep doing your job. You got to give them something. So uh, totally agree. Uh, yeah. Louis, two minute drill. Take us home. I think it's it's really about from a company standpoint, it helps keep you competitive in, in a very competitive market. Um, and it helps build company morale. And usually when those things are at an all time high or at a high, you're gonna get employees that uh, feel that, get caught up in it, and are, are gonna push uh, push the envelope and go beyond what you're asking them. So yeah control what you can. There is an end goal every year if your company has something like this in play or if they don't, but, you know, be motivated. It really can pay off. um, And you have some fun usually at the end of it. Yeah. From a candidate standpoint, it's a popular sports term, bulletin board material. On my bulletin board, I have my goals for this year. It includes the incentive trip from our end. So um, from a candidate standpoint, you know, keep reminding yourself what your goal is, why you're trying to do things um, and just, stay hungry and and stay consistent. And if your company isn't one that does a lot with incentives or recognition, reach out to your manager, reach out to your HR people. They're looking for ways to improve employee engagement and the employee culture all the time. Whether or not they explicitly tell you that, it's never a bad thing to reach out and say, hey, we can do better. Let's talk about ways to do better. Yeah, yeah. The carrot and the stick, you know, analogy, it works. It's motivating to keep pushing forward, essentially, is the message there. And give employees a carrot. For sure. That's attainable. I don't want that. Because I'm pretty sure that's not attainable in the in that analogy. Of course, just keeps walking. But there I get Sure. Uh, if anyone from the NFL is watching, uh, we will expect both of our Pro Bowl invitations in the mail anytime now. I think we probably stand a decent chance at this point. Back up water boy here. I mean, I could yeah. do that all day. Something. I don't know. We'll find a spot. They'll find something for us. But uh, Louie, appreciate your time as always. Always a pleasure with these wonderful sports banters. Uh, on behalf of Louie and myself, thank you for again for tuning into the High Roll Hot Corner. Please do join us again in two weeks for our next installment. And as always, stay classy, LinkedIn.